This Witcher 4 tech demo on Unreal Engine 5.6 has been causing a lot of discussion online, and I want to weigh in on some of it, because for one thing, uh, they say that this is running at 60 FPS on a PS5 with ray tracing, and I want to be clear here, this does not mean that The Witcher 4 will run at 60 FPS on the PS5. That's one thing I want to clear up, because uh, the way they phrase what this is is very careful, and some people are misunderstanding this. This is not a demonstration of The Witcher 4. This is a tech demo of Unreal Engine features being developed to help support games like The Witcher 4, and even The Witcher 4 developers, CD Projekt Red, are involved in the development of these features, and I think all of that's really cool. But none of this is saying that you are seeing The Witcher 4 right now. This is uh, set in the world of The Witcher 4, and some of these tools may end up being used in The Witcher 4. Uh, and even some of these assets, maybe, but Witcher 4 is a long way off, and I don't think we'll be seeing it running at 60 FPS on a base PS5, but who knows. Uh, now, one thing they're going to show here is they're talking about animations looking very natural getting onto the horse, and then that the horse itself is having actual muscles being rendered underneath it, uh, which is really cool. But I'm also looking at things in the background, right? Uh, signs that this actually is running in real time on a PlayStation 5. For example, the reflections behind this, sure, maybe there is RT going on here, but these are not super high resolution RT reflections. So they're trying to show, show the horse right here, and they should, and it looks great. But if you look at like, the reflections happening in the background and things like that, uh, nothing here is necessarily a mind-blowing thing that I don't think is realistic to run on the PS5. Uh, uh, you know, at, at 60 FPS, also at certain resolutions. So also keep that in mind as we look at things, because there's definitely some signs of a lot of upscaling happening here, and this does not at all, like I'm watching this on a native 4K screen, and sure there's a lot of YouTube compression, but there's a lot of sign that this is not a native 4K output. So they're not saying this is 4K 60 on the PS5 either, because I've seen some people saying that this is 4K 60 because the, uh, the YouTube video itself is 4K60, I guess I'm behind that. But um, So we need to be really clear that just because a video is uploaded at a 4K resolution and running at 60 FPS, does not mean that the gameplay being featured in it is at 4K60. So that's another thing I think we need to be cautious on here. If I freeze frame this and I'm on a native 4K display, again, there's YouTube compression to deal with, but I can tell you this looks at, like it's outputting a much lower resolution than 4K, and it's being upscaled to hit that, because there's a lot of signs of upscaling artifacts going on here. Um, but what they're about to show here is very cool. Uh, they're showing Nanite compatible with foliage. So let's actually take a look at that for a second, because I do think this is really cool. I do think the trees here look great. Um, the only issues I have with them are really just the upscaling artifacting, I think, that's, that I'm seeing. Um, and again, combined with, combined with YouTube compression. But what they're showing here is Nanite uh, is running on the foliage itself. Nanite has not been completely compatible with foliage up to this point. Uh, and the idea here is that you could fully model pine needles, leaves, all of that. Um, at full detail, and then the game will just load the amount of detail that's needed at your viewing distance and rendering resolution and uh, call out the parts you don't need so that you can model all of this detail without using cards and things like that. But they're saying it's a, an adaptive voxel representation in Nanite that's actually going on here uh, for fully 3D rendering of this foliage. Now, I do think that that is really cool. And I do think that this could really help foliage in this type of game. Um, and again, have it respond well, uh, you know, in 3D to all the different lighting and um, uh, resolution scaling and, and, and all of that. So, so that's all cool stuff. But again, a lot of these camera pans and everything, definitely very uh, scripted here. So well, technically, I think, you know, this is referred to as gameplay and parts of it are being controlled, I think, in real time. Um, that's... Uh, you know, just, just something to keep in mind here. Again, as the camera pans along here, I'm seeing a lot of, uh, you know, signs of, uh, you know, upscaling artifacting as, as things are in motion here. So just, I'm pretty sure this is running internally at a fairly low resolution in order to hit the 60 FPS target on the base PS5. And I'm not saying that it doesn't end up looking quite good to get there, um, but yeah, the, there's, there's definitely compromises being made to, to hit this. Um, now, what they're going to show here is uh, 
they've talked about improvements to loading in a lot of geometry without uh, stutters and hitches. They didn't quite say stutters and hitches, but I think that, that's what they're talking about there as they were panning through a lot of the forest and then entering the town. Uh, and then they also show off a lot of the uh, wanting to make things dynamic as you move around here, uh, which is cool. So anyway, uh, a lot of this really does look quite impressive. Again, running this at 60 FPS on the base PS5, even if it's not at a super high internal rendering resolution, uh, I think is a pretty cool achievement. Now, one thing I'm really hopeful for with all of this, with the CD Projekt Red collaboration with uh, <laughs> Unreal Developments is, you know, one thing to say about Cyberpunk is that there's not stutters. It's not stuttery. Um, and it's very efficient on loading and using a ton of CPU cores and things like that. Uh, whereas Unreal Engine 5 has been less so. So I'm hoping, I've seen some people, uh, let me put it this way, I've seen some people scared that the Witcher 4 will be a stuttery mess because it's using an Unreal Engine. And I think it's right to maybe have some concerns about that. But I do think it's important to also, you know, have a, a glass half full look at this. If the uh, engine development wizards at CD Projekt Red are able to actually bring a lot of their expertise to bear on Unreal Engine developments, hopefully that they can solve these problems. Because a lot of what Unreal Engine 5 does is incredibly impressive, and it's uh, helpful for a lot of developers to be able to use this engine, um, makes hiring a lot easier, training a lot easier, all of that. So I think the best case scenario is that you solve the engine problems. And that's what they're trying to, uh, uh, to showcase here, I think, is that they're in making massive improvements uh, to the kinds of issues uh, that you had running big, uh, uh, big games within Unreal Engine 5. And a lot of this is looking quite impressive because again, despite my hangups on you know resolution and things like that and people misinterpreting this as actually being The Witcher 4 running at PS, uh, on a base PS5 at 60 FPS, um, I do think that what we're seeing here is really impressive to be running at 60 FPS on, on the base PS5. So that is all pretty cool. Uh, again, though, keep in mind how scripted all of this is, right? So usually with tech demos like this, it's not necessarily capturing what the real game would, would actually deliver. There's these careful camera pans, and a lot of times things are hanging on the, you know, the edge of a knife as far as uh, it, it all actually working out here. Um, here they're talking about trying to deliver, you know, interactive scenes and, and dynamic, um, uh, NPCs within the environment. Uh, now I might skip ahead here a little bit, uh, or I, I don't know, I guess we could kind of let the thing play out. I, I worry that, uh, you know, I drag on the video if there's not a whole lot to say here. Um, but you can see that they're talking about here, Unreal Smart Objects, Chaos Cloth, and more, etc. They're talking about improvements to the interactivity of all of these objects and NPCs. Again, placing the fish down there and having a character grab it. Um, actually pick it up, uh, you know, cloth deforming on the clothes, all sorts of things, does look pretty impressive. Uh, now what they're gonna show here is showing off how many characters with actual skeletal models and everything like that they can get into a scene. Right now there's a decent amount on scene, but they're about to increase that greatly. And this is one of the places where I've seen Unreal Engine 5 struggle quite a bit. And a lot of times in the console versions of games that fail to hit 60 FPS, a lot of times the issue is CPU related. And what they're showing here is bringing in 300 characters into this city environment uh, with an animation fra framework that they're saying still fits into the 60 FPS budget, uh, not just for the GPU rendering, but they're also saying with the actual game thread on the CPU. Uh, they're saying these are animated skeletal mesh agents all going about their business, and the whole point is uh, <laughs> uh, to, again, have improvements to the game thread. This is one of the places where I'm really hoping that Unreal Engine 5 gets better optimization is on the CPU side of things. Uh, with, with how it deals with these large populations in city environments and things that they mentioned earlier, uh, for example, like uh, as it streams through areas, bringing in all of those assets, not getting traversal stutter as stuff loads in, uh, but also not getting um, 
uh, you know, just random uh, hitching and stuttering. Uh, and again, I also have more concern about the PC side of things compared to the, the console side of things with a lot of that. So we'll have to see how it goes. Anyway, uh, here they're showing off again. You can stream stream out here pretty quickly. Again, I did see as things are moving, there's definitely some ghosting behind stuff, some breakup. So there's definitely a lot of a TSR upscaling going on here, I think, to make all of this possible. And then they're showing a first look at a uh, large city uh, to be featured in The Witcher 4. But again, is any of that city actually modeled out and ready to go, right? I I've seen a lot of people, I think, misinterpreting the, the level of what is, uh, is here. Anyway, this is pretty cool. Now, this is all coming as a um, part of a developer showcase um, uh, for Unreal Engine 5.6. So you can certainly read more into this, and I'll link all the sources in the video description. But generally, they're highlighting uh, certain improvements, uh, allowing it to be easier to run high-quality features at 60 FPS, like they're calling out here. Uh, they're saying that their hardware ray tracing system uh, has been enhanced for better performance with Lumen Global Elimination by eliminating key CPU bottlenecks. They're saying that you can get it running at 60 FPS. Because this is one thing I'll mention is that the hardware-based version of Lumen has not been uh, used very much so far with Unreal Engine 5. Uh, because, uh, again, I think it was just too demanding, so not very many games have been able to use that, and one of the places where it is demanding is on the CPU side of things. So that's when, it, when they're saying that this was running with ray tracing on the PS5, they're talking about hardware-based Lumen. So, anyway, if they really are uh, making that more performant, I think that's great. Um, Again, they're showing off scenes like this, uh, talking about uh, their fast geometry streaming plugin, which is apparently still experimental, saying that you can get a greater amount of immutable static geometry in the worlds that will load faster with constant frame rates, and saying additionally, all projects will benefit from further improvements over content streaming, such as asynchronous physics state creation and destruction. Uh, in general, it sounds like they are trying to target a lot of the places where Unreal Engine 5 has had issues, which I think is really nice to see. Anyway, they're just also talking about with Unreal Engine 5.6, beyond that uh, Witcher demo, they're talking about um, improvements to animation authoring, uh, which could look cool, uh, the curve editors, all sorts of stuff. A lot of this is going to be more interesting to game developers rather than people who just play games, so I, I don't want to spend too long on all of this. Uh, but again, they are talking about pretty cool like skeletal meshes within stuff, improvements. Uh, the metahuman creation being now within the uh, in, uh, engine itself rather than, I think, as a separate uh, uh, thing that you would run and then, and then um, bring in. Uh, improvements to the UI and UX, uh, etc. So anyway, the point is, this does look like a big improvement to the engine, potentially. And I think that anything that is helping game developers develop good-looking games uh, in a reasonable amount of time is good stuff. From the PC side of things, what I'm mainly looking for is I do want Unreal Engine 5 to be more performant and less stuttery. And I am trying to be uh, on the glass half full side, saying that I'm hoping that this collaboration with the uh, Witcher developers will take the best of their expertise from the Witcher games and use it to improve Unreal Engine, uh, rather than take the worst of Unreal Engine and cause problems with the Witcher 4, right? That's what we can all hope for. Uh, let me know what you guys think about all this in the comment section. You can watch the full resolution uh, video, and I'll have this uh, available here as well. Uh, linked in the video description. Hope all of you have an excellent day.